morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Amen. We're doing all right? Why don't we stand to our feet? Come on, has God been good to you? I know God has been good to me. Let's take some time today to celebrate how good God has been. Amen? Amen. Lord, we love you. We thank you, oh God. And we are so excited to be in your house today, Lord, in your presence, oh God. So, Lord, we worship you with everything that we've got. Amen. He's the only 
true God. He is the only living God, King of kings, Lord of lords. Come on, do we really believe that this morning? Can we really hold on to that this morning? And if we can really hold on to that this morning, that should fill our hearts, our lives, our spirits with joy. Amen? Come on, how many of you walked in this morning with the joy of the Lord? Come on, did we walk into this place this morning with the joy of the Lord? I hope you did. But if you didn't, we're going to sing a song in just a minute. It's a new song. We haven't done it before. It says, there is joy in the house of the Lord today. That this is a day that the Lord has made. And we can rejoice and be glad in it. We can have the joy of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout it out loud. We're going to shout out his praise. Come on now. We talked about it even last week. It's a time to sing out, to shout out the praises of our God and King, to no longer be silent, to no longer be quiet, to declare the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. Amen. So we're going to do this new song this morning and, and it's really simple. There is joy in the house of the Lord today. So we will not be silent. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's do it. Come on, can we worship with our hands right here? Let's worship to our God Almighty. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds a victory, yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out. Declare this together. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, can somebody praise this morning? We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We shout, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout it out. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. Shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. 
somebody shout his praise this morning because our God is good and we sing to him with joyful hearts come on can I hear somebody praise the Lord this morning if you feel that there is joy in the house why don't you just continue to tell him God thank you Lord because it is in you that we have joy in our hearts Lord it is in you that we can come and we find rest Lord it is in you that we place everything Lord because we know that only you can turn everything in our lives into good Lord we declare that and we sing that Lord the weapon may be formed but it won't prosper and when the darkness falls it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph Oh my God will never fail If you know that's true, let's sing it again Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you a victory for the Cause I know how the story ends Yes I know, yes I know how the story I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord Oh I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory Whatever it is that's happening, we place it in your hands, Lord, because only you can turn it into good. Only you, Lord, the battle belongs to you, Lord, yeah. All the battle is yours, we place it in your hands, Lord. Let's sing this together. You take, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Let's raise our voices. You take the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it.
this morning, God, that you have the victory and you have the power, God. God, but even more than the miracle, God, we want the miracle maker. God, we want to see you more than anything, God. More than what you can do, God. God, we invite you into this place. Nothing else, nothing else will do. 
Lord, we wouldn't get comfortable. We wouldn't get satisfied. We wouldn't get to a place where we quit chasing you. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't get to a place where we quit running after you, where we quit seeking your presence. Oh, God, I pray that we would always be hungry for more of you. Oh, God, I pray that we would always have a desire to know you more, that we would always have a desire to draw near to you. Oh, God, as you are calling unto us, oh, God, I pray, Lord, that we would just run to you, oh, God. Run to your presence, oh God. In the middle of everything else going on, Lord, we focus on you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive and well and that you are here. So, Lord, I ask that your hand would be over this place, over your people, over our homes. And that in these moments, oh God, that you will prepare our hearts for what you're going to do the rest of this service, Lord. We love you, and we praise you, and we thank you for all of these things. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Isn't God incredible? God is amazing, he is wonderful, he is awesome, and he is here. And I'm so thankful for the presence of God as we gather together in this place, in our homes, and all over the place. Amen? Amen. If you're here with us in person as we continue the service, would you please be seated this morning? Thank you. Good morning, GSEC. We are so excited that you're able to join us for our Sunday service. We want to welcome all of our guests this morning. If this is your first time joining us, let us know by scanning the QR code located behind every seat. If you are joining us online, please text CONNECT to 956-395-1551. You will be redirected to fill out our online Connect card. We will love to get to know you and stay connected with you. A baby dedication is a ceremony where parents make a commitment to raise their children to hear, believe, and obey God. Our church family is witness to this and commits to help and encourage parents to raise their children in the Lord. A special family celebration will be held on Tuesday, May 4th, and the baby dedication service will be held each of the services on Sunday, May 9th. To participate in the baby dedication event, please complete the registration form at gsccconnect.com or contact the church offices. Today is the last day to register. Congratulations to all of our high school seniors graduating this year. You pushed through a challenging year and we are so proud of you. We want to celebrate your accomplishments by throwing a party for you and your family. Register to participate in our very special Senior Sunday event at gsccconnect.com. We want to take this time to go over the different ways that you can give. 
For quick and simple giving, you can text the word GSCC to 77977 or give online at gsccconnect.com. Or, if you prefer, you can bring your tithes and offerings to the church offices Monday through Thursday during business hours. If you are joining us in person, you can drop off your tithes and offering in the offering containers located at each of the sanctuary exits. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. Now let's pray. Dear Lord, we bring our tithes and offerings with grateful hearts. We pray that you would use these offerings to bless those around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Morning. morning. Everybody doing okay this morning? Good, good, good. Well, it's, back, it's good to be back home. Excuse my voice. I've got allergy issues. We're in South Mississippi last weekend speaking at a prophetic conference, and I got introduced to old New Paulins, and it's kind of messed with me a little bit, but man, it's so good to be home. Turn with me with this morning to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, as we continue the series that we started uh, earlier this month that we've entitled Launch. Hebrews 11:8 it says by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance and then it says and he went out not knowing where he was going let's pray father god i thank you for your presence in this house this morning i thank you for your goodness it always goes before us i thank you lord that as we gather that you, O oh God, have prepared a meal for us. You've prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And as we navigate the new season, O oh God, that we're in, I pray that you would continue to go before us, stand behind us, surround us, and be in our very midst, be in our homes, be in our workplace, be in our schools, be everywhere that we are, O oh God, that we may know you and serve you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to, uh, you know, just, I'm, I'm going to continue this series that we're on called Launch. We're talking about, can you help me with this fan just a little bit, please? Yeah, it's, uh, I usually like it on and it's a little bit cooling to me today, a little bit too cool. Anybody need some extra air out there? I'll gladly point it your way. And, uh, but anyway, welcome. Welcome again to GSEC. Those of you that are watching us online, always good to have you with us. But as I said, we're on this series that I felt like the Lord spoke to me quite a while back that we would be launching a series called Launch. And we started the series, uh, L is we, we need to leave the old, A is we need to acknowledge, accept, and adjust to the new chains, the new seasons that we're in. U is understanding the times, which Pastor Rick preached last week. And to, today I want to talk about navigating the journey. And as I went back to uh, Picayune, Mississippi last week where we spent eight years of our lives, both Rick and Gabriel went to high school and school there and graduated from there, it was good to see uh, old faces, people that we've known for, for many, many years, but we also saw a lot of new faces. There's a lot of people that I saw that I had no idea who they were. Well, I began to remember that it's been 12 years since we left that place. We left Picayune, Mississippi and came to Brownsville in 2009 and many things change. And it's like the Lord continued to remind me about what we're preaching is that there is a pattern in the Bible and in our lives that I call the pattern of leaving and entering. You leave one season and you enter another. You leave one place of your growth and you enter another. And so I was just being thankful to the Lord for all that he has done in our lives. Every opportunity that we've had to minister, to partner with him, to make a difference in people's lives. And it was really good to see some old friends and it was really good to meet some new friends. Uh, in the middle of the conference, we got a call from uh, uh, Sandra's uh, family and you keep Sandra's dad, John Broyles, in your prayers. Uh, he's 87 years old. 15 years ago, they told him that he had six months to live, but he says the doctors don't know what they're talking about and he's still going. But uh, he's, he's, he's just going through some challenges right now. So keep, keep John and Sandra and her family in your prayers. As we had to, I had to put Sandra in an airplane and get her home to uh, Houston as I stayed and finished my assignment there in Picayune for the conference. But while I was there, man, I just, man, so grateful. I said, Lord, thank you so much for, for, for what you, where you brought us from. And I'm talking about from the very beginning. And thank you, Lord, for where you're continuing to take us in this season of our life. There is a girl there that I had not met before. Uh, 
and this has to do with the message, and then we're going we're gonna to get on with uh, the rest of the, of the scriptures. But she called Pastor Allen and said, hey, I, I feel like I have, a, I have a word for Pastor Richard, and uh, I, I'd like to, if it's possible, can you make time because I have something that I want to share with him. And so I'm always real skeptical about stuff like that. I mean, I, get, I have people that speak into my life, I know where they're connected to. I know where they go to church. I know, they're, I know they're safe people is what I call them. I don't just allow anybody to speak into my life because you never know if it's coming from the spirit or coming from their soul, from a place of just their own whatever. And so Pastor Allen said, no, we, she's been with us for a while. You weren't here. She came after you left, but she's really connected here. And she had an encounter with the Lord. And anyway, she just... Uh, she, the Lord speaks to her in her dreams and she does paintings. And it's just, uh, I don't have enough time to tell you all of those, explain all those things. We'll talk about that, uh, what the Bible says about that in a, on another time. So we met with her. I asked Alan if she would stay in the room, if he would stay in the room with us because I didn't know this lady. And uh, she said, listen, I, I, I had a dream. She says, and in the middle of the night, I woke up about, uh, uh, she said at 1234, she says, I woke up and I was calling your name, and I have no idea who you are. And I began to pray for you. And it happened on March the 3rd, April the 3rd of 21. So she said on 4-3 of 21, at 1, 2, 3, 4, at 12, 34, God put this word in my spirit for you, and I want to share it with you. And I said, okay. And so uh, she said, you know, I'm not, I don't understand. I don't know about numbers. But I said, well, he does. The Lord speaks to him through numbers. And she said, well, I heard, I heard this. One, at 1234, 1, 2, 3, 4, on April the 3rd, 21, 4, 3, 2, 1. I said, that's just so weird. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I heard this word countdown. Get ready to launch. Well, she had no idea what we're preaching. She didn't know what we're in the middle of a series that we've entitled Launch. So when she said the numbers and she, and she began to say countdown, I knew that God was tracking us, that he's getting ready to take us out of what was and lead us into what is going to be as individuals, but as a church. Listen, please hear me this morning. We're, we don't do church just to do church. God has a plan and a purpose for you, for me, for us as a church. And God is intentional about everything that he does. He brings people together on purpose for a purpose, and it's his purpose. And in different seasons, he asks us to do different things. And we have to be, like Abraham said, he was obedient when God spoke to him, he said, it says, by faith, I mean, it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive an inheritance, and he went not knowing where he was going. Now, I want you to catch this. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 4. She didn't know I was going to be preaching that message today. Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, come on. I mean, it's just, either all this is just a big coincidence or God is, God is trying to get our attention about something. And I believe that God tracks us. I believe that God is faithful. I believe that God knows exactly what he's doing, when he's doing it, how he's doing it, and why he's doing it. And our part is to trust him. We don't have to understand. We don't have to have the finished picture. We don't have to have all the details. We just have to put our faith and our trust and our confidence in the one who has all the details for our lives in this season and past seasons and in the seasons that are to come. Genesis chapter 12, y'all with me? I'm going to talk about navigating the journey. God has you on a journey. Come on, turn to somebody and say, did you know you're on a journey? Hey, you, you guys are on a journey. Did you all know you're on a journey? You know, you don't have to understand it. All one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. God is launching you into the next season. And, and, and when God begins to do that, we just have to trust him. We don't have to figure it all out. Quit trying to figure it out. You just trust God as he leads you and directs you. He says, if you love me, trust me with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct your steps. He directed him then to get you here. He'll direct him now to get you from here to whatever it is that he's wanting to do in this season of your life. We can, tr I'm telling you, I trust God. It's the only reason why we've been here 12 years is because God can continues to lead us and guide us and keep us on a solid foundation as we move forward in every season, every year, year after year, month. After, come on, somebody ought to be glad that there's a God that can track us, that can lead us. Well, I didn't like some of the seasons. Yeah, me either. 
Some of the steps were rough. Remember, we talked about it last week. Between the old and the new, there's an in-between time, and, and that's where it gets really, really tough because things don't happen like we want. Things don't happen when we want it, how we want it, or how we thought it was going to be. One of the speakers said, hey, it's time to put our big boy pants on and let's go. Achuas. That was pretty direct. So he said, Lynn, trust God to lead you out of where you've been and into the new that he has for you in your life. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says, now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country. In other words, he says, you're going to leave where you've been, Abraham, and you're going to go. You're going to leave the familiar and take a journey to what you've not discovered yet, to a new place, a new season, a new time. He says, from, he says get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. God has a plan for him. God has a plan for us and for you. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Verse three says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed. He left the old, he left the familiar, he left one season and was gonna trust God at his age to enter into another season. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old, andale, when he departed from Haran. It's never too late to fulfill God's plans and purposes for our lives. Five times God told Abraham, I will. I will do this. I will show you. I will lead you. I will bless you. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. We need to leave the old, whatever that means to you personally and individually as a church, when church is not the same as it's been before. You're going to do things that maybe are going to ruffle some feathers, maybe even within your own family. Why are you doing this? Because God said, and I just got to be like Abraham. I got to be obedient. Are you sure? Maybe Abraham went not knowing where he was going. He kind of had an idea, but he, he, didn't, he didn't know exactly how it was all going to unfold, but he had a confidence in God, so he stepped out into something totally new and totally different. And he was prepared to take the journey and navigate the journey. And I'm going to give you four things here in a little bit. And he was going to have to navigate the journey in spite of what everybody else around him was saying. Amen? Amen. So we leave the old, we acknowledge, we accept, and we adjust to the new. We understand the times. We navigate the journey. Next week, we're going to talk about consider. God said, tell him to consider considering me. And then we hold on to God. But I want you to understand, again, that on our way to the new, we're going to have to manage or navigate Another word for navigating this manage, we're going to have to navigate our thoughts, we have to navigate our emotions, and we're going to have to navigate our actions along the journey. And to help, help us, to help me every time God has moved me out of one season and into another season in my life, there's several things that were really important for me to understand as I stepped into the... Let me just ask this question. Anybody out there, somebody, anybody here feel like you're entering into something new in this season of your life? Let me just see your hands. I want to make sure I'm at the right church preaching to the right people. How about out there? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Four things that we have to understand. Y'all ready? Are you taking notes? And then I'm going to break them down for you real quickly. Number one, we have to understand the reality of the journey. We have to understand the purpose of the journey. We have to understand the potential problems in the journey. And we have to have a certain mindset along the journey. So the first one is we have to understand the reality of the journey. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says that he got up and he went. The reality is, is you're not going to get unstuck until you realize it's a new day, it's a new season. It'll never be exactly like it used to be. I got to let go of that. The reality is, is that I'm going to have to have faith to, to turn loose of some things to discover the new things that God has for me in my life, in my workplace, in my whatever. You can just fill in the blanks as how it applies to you personally. So we have to remember that we talked about patterns and, and we see this pattern again here in Abraham's life. At 75 years old, he had to leave everything he learned up to that point and enter into a new season to discover new land and new territories and new streets and new peoples and, and all those things. And along that time, the reality of the journey, how do I know? How do I know that this is really happening? Well, sometimes God will shut doors. That I try to open, and God sometimes then open doors that I didn't even, that I, that, that I thought were shut. Nothing, please hear me, GSEC family and friends, nothing happens by accident. 
God is very intentional because he has a very specific plan for you and for you and for me and for this church and for this city. The journey requires movement. Everybody with me? You can't take a journey if you ain't moving. And arriving requires faith. We got to move by faith. James says faith without works or movement is dead. He called Abraham out of his comfort zone. Some of you are being stretched. Some of you are being called out of your comfort zones. The reality of the journey is that God is asking us to leave one season and enter into another. The second thing that I want you to understand this morning that we have to navigate is we have to understand the purpose of the journey. Why at that time? Are you asking God, God why now? Come on, somebody help me this morning. And you say, why now, Lord? Why this season? Why couldn't it happen when? <laughs> There's a purpose in what God is wanting to accomplish in our lives. Here's the purpose of the journey. Y'all with me? How many of you want to know the purpose of the journey? I mean, I may as well know if it's going to cost me. I want, to know what it's, I, know, I want to know what I'm paying for. How many of you like to know what you're paying for? How many of you call H-E-B and say, lo malo que salga, vámonos, I'll go pick it up. <laughs> you want to... You wanna... You know, it's kind of like, okay, Lord, what, 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 is there a purpose in this? And absolutely, he does everything on purpose for a purpose. Look what he says in, in, chapter, in verse 2. He says, he, the purpose of the journey, I will make you a great nation. He says, I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. The purpose of the journey is that he wants to enlarge you. He wants to lead you forward. He wants to bless you so that you can be a what? A blessing to the nations. He wants to bless you so that we can be a blessing to others. Psalms 2.8, and I don't have that scripture for you. He says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. We must let him do the work in our personal lives during the in-between time because there's something that he's trying to get us to and we're going to have to navigate or manage our thoughts our emotions and our actions. Your journey, my journey, our journey together as a fellowship is important, not only for you and for me, but for those around us. Can you, just, can you get a hold of this this morning? God is gonna lead you somewhere and it may not be easy and it may not be difficult and you may not like it, but the purpose of every time that God has moved us, every time that God has led us, every time that God has asked us to do something, it's because he wants to bless us. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about a state of well-being and peace so that no matter what happens, we can be a light in the midst of the darkness. We can be peace in the midst of the storm for our children and our children's children, that we can walk in a way where we trust God and that we will be blessed by God. We will be taken care of by God. We will be healed by the Lord. We will be freed by the Lord, we will have everything that he promises to us so that we can lead others to the same blessings that God has blessed us with. He wants to bless us in this season to be a blessing. So there's the reality of the journey, there's the purpose of the journey, and then there's the potential problems with the journey. I know. Every time we've stepped out in faith, every time we've done something, it comes with a cost. Who told us that serving God wasn't going to cost us something? Our salvation is free. We're saved by grace, not by works, lest anyone should boast. But being a disciple and following Jesus and trusting him is going to cost you. It may cost you friendships. It may cost you popularity. It may cost you a job. It may cost you, I don't know, in the times we live in. Listen, if you're going to follow Jesus, if you're going to serve him with all your heart, it's going to cost you something. It says in verse 6 of Genesis chapter 12, same story. And it says, and Abraham passed through the, well, let me back up to verse 4. It says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. And Abraham passed, verse 6, through the land to the place of Shechem as far as the Tebron tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were in the land. You know who the Canaanites were? They were the giants in the land that were God's enemies. The potential problem in navigating the journey is that you've got to be prepared for battle. 
You've got to be spiritually equipped to take to handle whatever the enemy throws your way. You're going to have some battles. It's not just going. It's not going to be easy. It's not just going to yeah, just because and I wanted to and it's just it's, it's all good. We're gonna we're gonna have to understand that we're gonna have to wrestle. Paul says in Ephesians six, we wrestle and we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers in dark places. He says, but having done all to stand, stand. We got to see the truth. We got to take some risks. We got to anchor ourselves to God. We never let fear lead us and we have to decide to obey God no matter what. Church, we've got to take a stand. You've got to take a stand in your house. You've got to take a stand in your workplace. And I'm not talking about being, being obnoxious. I'm talking about living a life, living a life that's loud, not by what we say, but by how we live and how we treat one another, how we understand the times that we're living in, how we use that that God has given us to bless others and to make a difference in their lives and to speak words of encouragement. Even when they speak bad against you, you bless them. He says, you love your enemies. You bless them. Those those who use you and those who despise you and those who talk about you, pray for them that I would bless them. And in that blessing, he says, you will be blessed. But we're going to have to prepare for the potential problems that we're going to face as we navigate the journey. Amen. Abraham perceived his own perceived limitations, his age, his health, his, his resources. But no, maybe 10 years ago, but yeah, it's too late. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. I don't think I have, I, I don't think I, I, I'm ready. I don't think I'm. Don't let the I don't haves in your life stop you in this journey out of the old and into the new. I must understand the reality of the journey. We must understand the purpose of the journey. And we must understand that we're going to face problems along the way. It's not going to be easy. Please hear me. Please hear me. It's not going to be easy, but God knows where he's taking you to. You're not going to like a lot of it. You're going to get to a place like all of us, including me, say this is too hard and this is not fair. But if I'm prepared for it and I choose to say, I know this is too hard. I know this is not fair. Why is all of a sudden, you know, why, why, why? And, and I don't, and I don't have this, and I don't have that, and if I had a bigger this, and if I had a better that, and do not let the I don't haves in your life stop you from navigating the journey and trusting God to get you to that place that he's trying to lead you to in this season of your life. Because remember, all the pain, all the struggle, all the suffering is causing us to turn and be dependent on the only true God, and he will then bless us as we put our hope and our, and our strength and our, and our eyes on him, and he will bless us so that we can bless those around us. We're going to face a season of war. We're going to have, don't let obstacles and fear throw you off course. You're going to feel like giving up sometimes in that in-between time between what was and what could be. Don't let the challenges of the journey in this season of your lives cause you to limit what God can do in you, with you, and through you. I've learned this in every season of change in my life. In my weakness, he is strong. Can I say that again? In my weakness, he is strong. In my lack, he is more than enough. In my fear, he is courageous. In my lack, he is plentiful. In my infirmity, he is healing. In the midst of my journey, what I lack, he has. Come on, what you think your children lack, he has. What you think you lack, he has. What you think you can't get to, he has. All we have to do is say, God, I'm in. I'm going on the journey no matter what. We have to understand the reality of the season that we're in. We have to understand the purpose. We have to understand that we're going to face some battles and difficulties and we're going to take some hits. People are going to try and discourage you from doing that that God has put in your heart to do. People are going to try and say, man, I'm back. Stop it. You can't do that. That'll never happen. That was, that's, 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 I must understand the reality of the journey, the purpose of the journey, the problems of the journey, and then we have to have a certain mindset along the journey if we're going to make it. And this is what I want to close my message with as I ask the worship team to come up. Look at verse 7 in Genesis chapter 12. 
Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. Please hear me this morning, moms and dads. Abuelo, abuelita, tios, tias. The journey that we're taking is not just for us. The battles that you're going to have to face are not just for you. The difficulties, the challenges, the obstacles that you're going to face, you're not facing them just for you. It's for the generations to come. Yeah, but the more I try, the further away they seem to get. God's not finished with them yet. God's got us on a journey, and it can be drooling, and it can be very difficult, it can be very disappointing. By the way, the Spirit of the Lord comes to break disappointment off some people here this morning. I just want to do this before I finish this message. If you're here, and in the last six months or the last year, you have been disappointed. You expected one thing, but it turned into another. God wants to break that spirit of disappointment. Because remember, I've said this before, disappointment comes from two words, this, which means undo, and appointments. God has appointments for you, but the enemy through circumstances comes to uh, separate you from the things that you're supposed to get a hold of that God has for you. But we get emotional and we get discouraged and we get disappointed and we think it's an emotion, but it's a plan of the enemy to separate you from God's promises for your life. If you're here and you experience disappointment, if you're out there and you experience disappointment, would you stand to your feet real quick, real quick? I'm not gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna pray. I wanna be obedient. I wanna pray for you. God comes to break off the assignments of disappointments and he comes to reappoint you, to redirect you, to re-instruct you, to lead you once again to everything that he has planned and purpose for your life. Right there in Jesus' name, every, put your hands up. If you're out there in TV land or computer land or phone land, put your hands up. Father, in Jesus' name, I stand here in your name and I take authority over those spirits of fear, spirits of lack, that spirit that comes to disappoint, to undo the, the appointments that you have prepared for these, your people, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that you redirect them. I pray for a refreshing. I pray for an encouragement. I pray for a strength, oh God. I pray for wisdom, oh God. I pray for courage, oh God. I pray for new vision, oh God, to make it through the uncharted waters that they'll have to navigate. In Jesus' name, disappointment goes. I break you. I take authority over you in the name and by the blood of Jesus, and I release you from your assignment against God's people, and I release peace and strength and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I pray, Father God, that you would come and re connect them and get them back on the road oh God to take them to those appointments that you have for them right here right now let it be so in Jesus name and all God's people said come on let's thank him I believe he's gonna do that I believe he's gonna do that y'all be seated y'all be seated so I finished preaching I, got, I just want to close this message up and then we're leaving the mindset through the journey verse 7 it says in says, and, Abraham, and the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. I'm fighting for my children and my children's children and your children and your children's children for the children in our community. They're worth fighting for. They're worth praying over. They're worth sacrificing for. They're worth doing whatever we gotta do. He says, this is what he did. This was his mindset. This has to be our mindset as we navigate the journey. He says, and there he built an altar to the Lord. There where, right where he was. In the good times, he built an altar. By the way, in the Old Testament, the altar was a place of sacrifice and it was a place of worship. And if we're gonna get to where God is taking us, we're gonna have to live sacrificially, all of us. Not just a few, we're all going to have to live sacrificially and we're all going to have to learn how to worship God and the good and the bad. Listen, it says, and he moved from there to the mountain to the east of Bethel and he pitched his tent with Bethel to the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. Abraham journeyed, going still on another move, another encampment. He pitched here and he'd get up and he'd go there. Everywhere he, every step God led him to, whether he thought it was good or bad, easy or hard, he sacrificed and he worshiped God. I don't just worship God when things go my way. I don't just worship God when I have everything I need. I worship God wherever I am, in the good and the bad. I'm gonna live sacrificially and I'm gonna worship God no matter what. He called on the name of the Lord. We must all sacrifice, we must all worship, and we must all, all of us, come on, let's go church. Come on, let's go, all of us. Quit worrying about it, let go of all that stuff. It's not that important. What's important is what we're doing for the generations to come. 
no matter what's going on, I'm going to live sacrificially. And I'm going to learn to worship God, especially when it's not good. From Bethel to the west, on A on the east, Abraham journeyed, going on still southward. He went here and there and everywhere in pursuit of God's promise, in pursuit of God's new, new season for his life. But in each season, every step of the way, every next step, he acknowledged, accepted, and adjusted to God's plan. No matter what he saw and how he felt, and he sacrificed. He says, bring me the sacrifice of praise, the psalmist wrote. And he called on the name of the Lord. I make it every season of my life. When my adversaries rise against me, when people that I thought I could trust betray me, when they speak evil of me, when they try to separate God's plans and purposes for my life, when they challenge the things that God is leading you to in the seasons of your life, you just worship God. Because God's going to bless you so you can be a blessing even to those who seem to come against you. Every eye closed in this place, every eye closed out there. If that's what's in your heart, say, Pastor, I'm acknowledging, accepting, and adjusting to change God's plan. I'm going to build an altar. I'm going to worship him no matter what, and I'm going to call on his name. If that's in your heart, stand up quickly right where you are. Stand up quickly if you can. Those of you watching online, say, I'm going to navigate the journey. I'm going to manage I'm going to manage myself by, by connecting myself with God. I'm going to ask God to take me by the hand and lead me and guide me and direct me. I know he's brought me here. I don't like it. Some of you are saying this is too hard. I don't understand why that happened. But I'm going to worship him anyway. Because you're a worshiper no matter what. Worship is not what you do, it's who you are. So we're going to worship him no matter what. Let's do this song one more time. Because nothing else will do, Lord. Come on, if that's your I just tell him, Lord, I just want you. Your presence, oh God. Your instructions for my life. Your plans for my life. In the good times, I just want you. In the hard times, I just want you. When they speak well of me, I just want you. When they speak against me, I just want you. When I'm healthy, I just want you. When I'm sick, I just want you. When I have plenty, I just want you. When I lack, I just want you. I just want you, come on. I just want you, Lord. Tell them. Watching online, come on, tell. I just want you, Lord. I surrender to your plan. I surrender to this new day, this new journey. Voices only. Come on, let's sing this with our voice this morning. Nothing else. Oh, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence, oh, I just want to sit here at your feet, caught up in this hole. No. 
so glad that you joined us for this great teaching today. It's our hope that the Lord would use this message to encourage you and to equip you to move forward into everything that he has prepared for you. If you have a prayer request, we would love the opportunity to pray for you. So stop by gsccconnect.com and click on the link labeled contact us to let us know how we can be in prayer for you. While you're there, be sure to check out our about page to learn more about the mission and vision of GSCC. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay current with everything that's going on here at GSCC. Be blessed and have a great week, and we'll see you next time.